Hey, what's going on there guys and girls? It's Kyle again from DIY Semi Pro, and this is going to be my Ducati Part Dua. <laughs> Two. Uh, video series today will be literally just taking things apart. I'll be uh, bagging and tagging all the parts, so that way I don't lose anything, and that way I know what parts go where upon reassembly. So, um, I'm pretty much just going to time lapse it all. And I mean, if there's anything important that I think I need to say, then I'll say it. Uh, I, I may or may not throw in my, I probably should throw, show you guys before I do it. Here's my I need to buy pile. And here's my I'm gonna fix pile. Uh, the first thing I'm actually gonna do though is get a uh, brake cable. And I'm gonna bleed the system and make sure that the ABS light goes off. What's up, pups? I'm gonna make sure the ABS light goes off because if that doesn't go off, if I bleed the system properly and I can't get the light to go off, then I have to evaluate, you know, what's the cause. Um, I do think it is just the cable and making sure that the system is bled properly. Um, so fingers crossed that that does work, that rectifies it. And if it does, then at that point, I will feel free to pretty much order everything else that I need to get. Because why dump 1,500 bucks into a bike, 1,000, 1,500 bucks that I'm gonna have bigger problems with and it may not have been, it's cost prohibitive in the end. So while I will take off a bunch of stuff today, uh, it's primarily just uh, obviously A, getting, I might, I always say A, A, B, C, D, just I gotta stop saying that. But my point is to remove the cable, the brake cable, which I think this thing goes all the way underneath the gas tank to the ABS module that's up here. So, I will be trying to take the tank off and uh, getting the gas out. I could probably siphon the gas out into uh, my five gallon jug or whatever. But that's the whole point is just to get the brake cable off so I can order it, put the new one on, check it, and then go from there. So, hope you enjoy sitting here watching the disassembly. Maybe you're playing some video games, glancing at the, at the, the phone or whatever, your computer as I'm doing this uh, at like friggin' 150 times speed or 200 times speed. And big thing, if you do do this, make sure that you, especially when you're doing brake fluid, that you wipe the body up when you're done. You, you, you could cover it first with a blanket sheet, something to absorb that stuff, and, and then I would still wipe it down afterwards with some uh, brake clean, spray it on a rag, wipe it down, and I use some like window cleaner with the microfiber towel at the end, just to make sure it's really clean and I don't scratch the paint, even, the, the undamaged paint sections of it. But I'm also gonna put some cardboard down here on the floor before I start working, just in case any brake fluid does get down on the floor. I don't want it to mess up my uh, my epoxy. So with that, I'm gonna get on to it. Days later. Basically, uh, I'm not going to be trying to, if you saw my previous video, trying to save this because it's all like plastic riveted to this thing. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to order a new one. It probably comes together anyway. So, and I'm guessing it comes with these inserts. If not, I'm going to keep these inserts as well. Um, this thing looks, I don't even know if you guys can see it. I mean, to me, it looks fine. I think it's the bracket that got messed up. So, yeah, looking at this bracket, this bracket, you guys can see it. Let me come on this side. So, basically, um, if you're looking at the flat plane, well, I mean, you can see this side's dipping down, right? Like, I'm gonna try and hold it flat. So, I'm looking at this in relationship to the back of the camera, and you guys can see how this side's already dipping down right here, right? So. I'm pretty sure it's this bracket. All I have to do is just put in the vise and just kind of, I mean, honestly, this thing, this thing's pretty, pretty easy to fix. So y'all, yeah, I'll put in the vise, put it in the ground and step on it and just kind of tweak it. 
but uh, I'm not worried. This should be salvageable. Let's clean it up. And we'll be good. This thing here, it's all scratched up. I don't know, we can see that on camera. I'm just gonna, just gonna zoom. No? I don't know if we can fix that. I might just buy a new one. All right, so there's a uh, there's a uh, rubber. Um, it's like a I don't know how to say it. It holds a fuse, and it's in a bracket. So I'm trying to get that rubber piece off right now, so I can actually um, get some better leverage to move it out of the way of. Uh, it's in the way right now of my my socket. So I'm just using this rubber O-ring screwdriver to get it out. And here it is right there. It's a little tiny, the fuse actually goes in this side. So, um, and I, I don't know if it's, I don't know what kind of fuse it is. I'm curious to look at the part number. Um, it looks like it's, maybe it's some sort of, uh, hmm, <laughs> it'd be funny if it was a rollover uh, type fuse or something, or a wet, a wet fuse, it's exposed on the bottom of this boot. You can actually see through it. So I don't know why you would have, oh, oh, maybe it's a thermometer. Oh, uh, temperature. Yeah, that's what it is. It's the probably the air, outside air temperature. Got it. And I'm actually going to put that right in there so I don't uh, damage it. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna clean this thing up, wipe it down, and then I'm going to let it sit for I don't know a week or so, and just make sure that it's holding charge. I mean, it started up, you know, at the freaking Copart yard, so uh, I think it's good. And uh, it didn't blow any fuses on the bike, I guess, because the bike started up too. So uh, yeah, that's it. I pretty much just wanted to have a clean clear working area without having to worry about the battery dying. Um, I'm also gonna take the tank off, so I wanna have more room in here to, to get to all that stuff. And then, so yeah, clean it up off camera. So I want to take this moment to show you guys, um, you know, there's things that you, you really can't see until you start stripping the thing down, right? So, um, you know, this thing, which I'm not quite sure what that is. I'm gonna have to go look at the manual and see what, I mean, it's part of the frame. So I don't even know if it'll, if it'll tell me what it is. Um, it looks like it's maybe just to keep the white, like when it was factory. 
Um, it was to keep the wires from crossing over. I don't know, like, uh, not sure, but I'll have to straighten it out. The so point being is that, you know, this video again is a, uh, it's kind of like a how-to based off of this specific condition of the bike and, and other bikes you guys get are not going to be like this for me. Worse it could be better, but at least you guys can understand what it is that I'm getting myself into. And, uh, this is the first time I'm doing it. So every time I do it, every time I do it, if I decide to do it again, you know, if I make them, if I make money or even if I break even, that's the goal It's just to break even. So I know how much it could cost if I do it again, uh, availability of parts. It's a different, it's an Italian bike versus, you know, a Honda Cowie. I mean, those things probably would be easier to get parts for. There's actually a CBR 1000. I was looking at buying just to try it out and see uh, difference in parts, you know, and even cost too. So, you know, you always just got to plan for the worst. And I, I, I think to be clear and fully transparent, I looked at the bike, I, I started it. Uh, I didn't, I didn't take any notes. I didn't write anything down. I didn't really, I didn't really look at it when I was there, like I was going to buy it. And then when I decided to buy it, it was so close, like, I did go and look at it in the morning. Um, actually something else, uh, razor that we were looking at my buddy and I, but, uh, in the end, you know, it is what it is. It's just lesson learned for the future. Should I decide to do it again? So, uh, with that, I'm going to just keep on taking things apart. That's how you remove the bezel. All right, I know what you guys are thinking. Uh, recording? Yeah, I know what you guys are thinking here. And uh, putting heat to the steering column. Well, I'm gonna. Some there's gonna be some heat transfer. Yes. Uh, a lot that I'm worried about the bearings being damaged. No, because 
their bearings are actually up here, even though the tab is down here about an inch below that. There's a lot of metal for the, the heat to dissipate. So I'm really just gonna be coming in from the bottom right here, trying to get um, trying to get this metal a little bit more malleable so I can bend it. And then, uh, where'd I put my, oh. Yeah, so uh, that's what I'm gonna try to do and uh, see if I can bend that a little bit. Let's see what happens here. I just saw an error message. It said maximum recording time reached. All right. I stopped with removing the tank. Uh, I forgot to hit record in the process of uh, trying to get these stupid freaking hoses off. I got them off. That was a pain, super pain. I'm actually going to try and show you. Uh, before I put the tank on, how you are supposed to take the, uh, use the little push clips and take these things out. I had a piece of wood in there and even somebody else, like a third hand would have been perfect, I think. Um, but anyway, tank's off and uh, I just got the hose in uh, for the front brake. So I'm going to take off the headlight, turn signals, uh, ignition, and then the line, route the new line in, fill up the, I'm going to, right the freaking reservoir so it's parallel to the ground, fill it up, open the bleed valve, and then um, probably let it uh, gravity feed, purge out, and then once it starts dripping down there, uh, close it up, hook up the battery, um, maybe while I'm waiting for it to actually drain, hook up the battery, and then I'm gonna try to uh, lead the brake line, if you will, um, since the, the actual handles, it's perfectly fine, and see if I'm successful, and if I am, the next step will be, well, I won't really know for sure if I'm successful because the ABS light won't go off until the motorcycle goes three miles an hour. So my options are spin the front and rear tires, like my wife on the front, I'm in the back, and see if we can get it four miles an hour. As soon as that light goes off, then I'm gonna call victory. So that's what we'll do.
the brake line routed tight over here. I'm gonna adjust the, uh, the bracket here to get the cylinder parallel. But you guys could probably see it right there. Maybe right there. Boop. If the master cylinder is right below, right, it's right below the top of the line, I'm probably gonna have to drop that line down just below the master cylinder and then uh, fill, fill it up and drain it out. So, and I'll let you guys kind of just watch me do that now. Besides some weird no-name brand they had at my local uh, hardware store, so or uh, what do you call it, AutoZone? Um, depending upon how things go, how hard this is, um, I may get different brake fluid. But honestly, I mean, my thinking is, I don't really care what type of brake fluid you have, as long as you're performing the proper maintenance intervals. Like, I probably wouldn't even go seventy-five thousand. Well, it's a bike, so. I don't know, whatever the book says for the maintenance interval, I'd probably go a little bit better than, than that and do it before. I, I'm gonna bleed the rear brake uh, cylinder reservoir as well. And uh, it's all about preventative maintenance. That's how I do it. So let's pour some of this bad boy in here. I got the light to go off. ABS light went off, baby. ABS light went off, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Touchdown, baby. Yes. <laughs> ABS light went off. Woo! Buddy. Yes. To me. For freaking doing it oh my god oh my god dude i'm so stoked i am going to start ordering everything else go oh, off well, i gotta still take things off and uh and really see what i need but uh but the fact the abs light went off like that is just primo primo honestly and the um the brake handle it's got good pressure right now Hey, what's going on guys? All right, we got that system bled, got the ABS light to go off, so I'm super stoked on that. On that. Thanks for watching all 25. It's probably gonna be 26 minutes or so with this final clip added onto it. I appreciate your time watching it. Hopefully you learned something. If you got a bike that you wanna take apart and add some mods to, you can see how you take some certain things apart. Um, and if you got any questions, by all means, 
put them in the comment section and uh, I usually pretty much re reply to everybody because right now my box is not getting inundated so uh, go ahead and hit, hit those comments up while you can. Um, if you don't mind, before you go though, please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button and you know, hit the bell so you get notified of all my future content and share it with anybody who may like to see this type of video as well. Uh, I don't see a lot of people um, putting their back end details in their videos of, of what it took. So I want to tell you guys, it was about three hours worth of footage and it took me about 13 hours to edit. Again, I'm a rook. Um, and then your final, your final clip is 25, 26 minutes in the end. So you can kind of see like, if you want to get into it, what type, well, how long you have to plan on investing in, in actually, you know, doing the work, sitting behind a computer to get that, that uh, content out there to other people. So. Uh, I hope you guys did enjoy it. I didn't actually put all my content in there for the teardown. I still have more, so it's, my part three is going to be a teardown part two. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. It's Kyle, DIY Semi Pro. Peace.